My name is George Padron. I think we've been dealing with uh, Jeff probably for about 12 years now. It's been a tremendous experience. I mean, Jeff, I consider one of the best retailers in the country. He's a great friend. He's very aggressive. He's a great businessman. I mean, he knows a lot about cigars. He knows how to sell cigars. He knows how to make his customers happy. He has a great staff. I mean, the guy just runs an unbelievable operation. My name is Jeff Orsowitz. I'm the president and founder of Corona Cigar Company. Now that the company's like 12 years old, I mostly focus on future projects and the direction of the company and making sure that the quality level of, of all of our, all of our uh, stores and mail order and things like that is at the level that we should be at. We have three of them. One of them is uh, in Orlando, Southwest Orlando in the uh, convention and tourist area. And then we have another one in downtown Orlando. It's right in the heart of downtown. And then one in the north part of Orlando in an area called Lake Mary Heathrow. My father had owned a, a full service gas station with auto repair ever since he was a, a, you know, in his 20s. And then through college, I worked uh, at the auto center and really became a very good technician and um, ran a real successful automotive service center with the tires and all that good stuff. I started thinking, how can I get a business that I could grow on a national level, but I wouldn't have that constraint of having say, you know, this is my target market, I can pull customers from 10 miles around my store. So I started looking at mail order. Um, two of the things that I was very interested in, my hobbies were offshore fishing and cigars. And so I really started looking into how can I make a business out of the cigars that would fall into the mail order category. And I just put it together. I, I had a car that was paid off and had a boat that was paid off. And I went to the bank and pitched the, the business plan to them. And they were like, yeah, we'll give you a loan, but it'll be a collateralized loan. And whatever your car and boat's worth is what we'll give you a loan for. So, uh, so I did that. And um, like, Almost all businesses, I, I underestimated the expenses of getting started. So uh, I had good credit and I had credit cards and I put the rest on uh, credit cards. I basically started the company with a, a $30,000 bank loan and then uh, put about $30,000 worth of debt on my credit cards. When I first started, uh, I had 100% support of my family. And really the person I got to thank the most for that is my father. You know, he could have easily said, you know, the heck with this, I'm not letting you do this in, you know, in, in the auto center while I'm doing this. Um, and he was supportive. Out of my house. Out of my house and then out of the automotive repair center. It was funny. I'd get cigar reps that would show up to the repair shop and they thought they had the wrong address. I'm like, no, no, this is it. You're in the right place. And, uh, and they chuckle now because a lot of the guys that, that I dealt with back then, I still deal with now. I started the company working at night from out of my house, and um, I was the only employee for Corona Cigar for two years. You know, I was the guy that wrote the catalog, put the catalog together, purchased the cigars, you know, took the orders, packed the boxes, and shipped them that same day. And it was like two years later, I hired my first employee, and she worked in a little office out of the uh, at the auto repair center. Right now, Corona Cigar employs around 90 employees. It can, you know, that can go up a few or down a few, depending on what time of the year. But between the three stores, we have 90 employees. You know, how each store is, is a little different in the way they feel when you walk in. The concept is the same. They all, they all have that, that, that Central American theme. I like to call it a Nicaraguan theme because that's where most of the, the items that are in the store come from. Um, but each store has a different feel to it for several reasons. One, the spaces are always different. Whenever I lease a storefront, um, you know, I, when I lease the spaces, there's, there's nothing in there. They're always, the place on Sand Lake Road, when I entered that lease, it was, this was a dirt pile. There was not even a, a building here yet. So, uh, you know, when you get certain stores, some of them are square, some are rectangles, some are circles, you know, like the downtown store, shaped like a, it's shaped like a pie. So. So, each, so you've got to try and build the concept into the space. So when you walk in, each one will be a little different. The other thing is, you know, 2002 is when I opened the, the, the store in Dr. Phillips. 
think it was in 2005 when they opened the Heathrow store. Fall of 2007 is when they opened the downtown store. You know, as we progress, we're always trying to improve. That's what I'm saying. We never stay still. So the next store is like, all right, I want to make this a little better for the customer. We want to make this a little different. And so, you know, when you go from the, the, the Sand Lake Road store to the, the one up in Lake Mary Heathrow and into the one at downtown, you'll see some improvements between each store. And the downtown store has the most improvements in it because, you know, each time you build a store, you learn. And each time that we they build that. that was the biggest store downtown as well. So, um, you know, we put some extra features in there that I couldn't afford in some of the other stores. Cigar Rights of America is a consumer uh, grassroots organization that is designed to protect the rights of uh, cigar consumers to be able to buy a cigar, be able to smoke a cigar, and to be able to afford a cigar. This is sort of a cottage industry, people that make cigars. And, and uh, you know, we're not lobbyists and we're not politicians, but when this tax came about, we had to learn how to quickly become lobbyists and quickly how to, how to watch what goes on in Washington and, and not only in Washington, but in states and federal, states and local and city governments too. We've got, you know, there's certain cities that wanna outlaw cigar bars and they wanna outlaw smoking outside. There's no association that represents the consumers. And this is a big void. And the consumers are the ones that ultimately get hurt by all this legislation. Because if they raise taxes, it's the consumers gotta pay more. If they make an outdoor smoking ban or cigar bars illegal, where, where can a consumer enjoy a cigar? And if they prohibit the sale of cigars, which is something new, um, there's movements where they want cigars not to be sold in a walk-in humidor, where a consumer can't just go pick up a cigar. They want to put it where it's behind curtains, where you can't even see the product, and you know they want it. There's been some movement where the cigars can't be sold singly; they have to be sold only in packages of five or more. Um, they have, you know, they, they want to have the boxes changed, where where they've got these graphic images of of the damage that uh, smoking like cigarettes causes, and it's like you know we're not cigarettes; we're a totally different industry. It kind of depends on, you know, what the future holds, whether we're in a recession, whether we're in an expanding economy, whether we're in a, you know, a bad tax situation, because one of the things we've learned in this business, especially in the last few years, um, things have changed, and they change rapidly, and we have to constantly adjust to whatever those changes are. Like, um, you know, a few years back, Florida had an indoor smoking ban that was enacted, and that actually helped the cigar bar part of the business and actually helped with our, our concept of a lot of consumption on premise. Um, right now in the year 2009, we're faced with one of the largest tax increases in the history of the cigar industry. So we're in a real price conscious type of era, especially with, since we're in a recession as well. So therefore, we're focusing mostly on mail order right now. Um, and then, we, you know, we talk about like the bars all three of the stores that have the bars, um, we also serve beer, wine, and pork, but my downtown store serves full liquor as well. And we intend on expanding that full liquor concept to our store in the north. Um, you know, five years from now, we definitely want to grow our mail order business. We want that to be much larger than it is right now. And we'll probably have at least one or two more retail locations open by then. No, I never, I never felt like I wanted to give up in this business. Even when, even when that tax was coming through, um, you know, I love what I do. I love this business. The people that work at Corona Cigar love the business. They love working here. And as long as you have that mentality, you'll never get tired of coming to work. And it's like my work day never really stops, but I enjoy it. You know, it's like I, you know, you go home and you think about things, and you never kind of turn it off type of mentality. But um, never, n even to this day, I, I'm not looking forward to get out of the business.